Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war film, entitled Innocent Voices. There will be spoilers ahead. Chill out and enjoy. A young boy suddenly becomes the man of the house after his father abandons the family in the middle of a civil war, battling for his rights and freedom. The movie begins in the year 1986. Hava, an 11-year-old El Salvadorian kid, and his family reside in the tiny village of Cuscatancingo, which is presently the location of fierce fighting between the Salvadoran army and the El Salvadorian rebels. When he was just five years old, his father emigrated to the United States during the American Civil War. Hava is a pupil at a nearby elementary school. When he finished in class, he went home directly to play with his friends in their neighborhood. Following an unexpected sighting of the military examining their community, Hava and his buddies immediately returned to their various houses. Meanwhile, Hava observes his mother, Kella, preparing supper, including chicken. Hava tells his mother about what he saw outside, and she advises him not to go outside at night again because soldiers may come looking for kids like him. El Salvador's armed forces will recruit him into active duty against the guerrillas when he reaches the age of 12, which will occur in the near future. The following day, Hava watches the army patrolling the school's premises, carrying children as passengers. When he sees those children being taken by the military, he becomes fearful all over again. The moment Hava arrives at his family's house, he is welcomed by his younger brother and sister. His mother is going to go to work as a sewer at a factory, where she hopes to earn a livelihood. Hava is now in charge of the household, and his mother has made it clear that he must never leave his siblings alone. When they hear gunshots outside later that night, Hava and his siblings are waiting for Kella to get home from work. When his younger brother hears the loud sounds coming from outside, he shouts, but Hava diverts his brother's attention by sketching a face on him with lipstick. When Kella returned home after receiving the news, she discovered that her children had already fallen asleep in their beds. Because Kella earns a living by sewing, Hava sells the garments she produces in order to support the family. When Hava is in school, he and his friends get intrigued by the soldiers that are stationed near their school and eventually become friends with them. An elderly woman who was selling on the street noticed the troops handing out gum to the children. In the moments before Hava is ready to return home, he is advised by an elderly woman not to get fascinated by soldiers since they would only educate young children like Hava to murder people. Later that night, Hava and his siblings are getting ready for bed while Kella is getting ready for dinner when they hear a loud explosion outside their home. Their mother quickly told them that they needed to get to the ground. For the second time, this is a typical occurrence in their community. The following day, there were a large number of innocent persons who had been slain in the previous night's attack. When Kella stepped outside and discovered his brother Beto lying on the floor, she assumed he had died. However, it turns out that he had merely been drunk and that his friends are asking for money in exchange for contributions from his remains as part of a funeral offering. Given that Hava is not in school, he works as a part-time bus announcer for a bus driver to supplement his income and assist his family with financial needs. Hava returned home with the money he had earned and handed it over to his mother. Meanwhile, Hava is having a good time at school with his classmates. They were occupying themselves with toy soldiers. Christiana Maria, a girl in Chava's class, becomes the focus of his affections. Suddenly, the army stormed the school, and Hava witnessed the army recruiting 12-year-old students from his school inside, as well as a 10-year-old being recruited after he tripped another boy like an evil prank on him, and he was violently restrained after he tried to escape, and his teacher was almost killed while attempting to defend him. They heard a gunshot after a soldier pursued the child who had run away from the scene. The freshly recruited children were transported in a military transport van. The next few days will be even more delightful for Hava as he begins to demonstrate his affection for Christina in more public ways. He sends her a note and asks her to come to play with him and his friends. When Hava gets home late one evening, he chooses to walk Christina to her house instead. They were walking down the street when they heard gunshots, which caused Hava to fear and run home. He got a reprimand from his mother for reaching home late, which was understandable considering the circumstances in their hamlet. They immediately sat down to eat with Chava's siblings and shared the food they had prepared. An unexpected visit from his uncle Beto, who has joined the rebels, arrives at Chava's family on a rainy evening. Since Chava's father passed away, his younger siblings have referred to their uncle as daddy. Gunshots could be heard once again while they were having dinner. Beto learned that his next-door neighbor, Angelita, had been shot and immediately rushed outside to check on the wounded. She did not make it and died as soon as she arrived. They were able to sleep peacefully since gunshots were freely fired outside the home. The following day, the whole neighborhood is in mourning over Angelita's death. Beto speaks with Kella and expresses a desire to take Hava with him in order to prevent the military from recruiting him. However, Chava's mother is opposed to this. Hava receives a radio from Beto, who instructs him on how to listen to the rebels' Venceremos radio station, which has been prohibited by the government. Even while he is in school, Hava continues to listen to the radio. He was taken aback as he passed by the military personnel. 
He was nearly wholly unaware that he was listening to a guerrilla radio transmission. As a result, he pretended that he was dancing and listening to music. Gunfights between government and rebel soldiers raged throughout the day in the village where they reside since the community is located on the outskirts of the combat zone where they settled. However, Hava is saved by the town's priest, who plays the same song over the church's loudspeaker, diverting the soldiers' attention away from Hava. He had intentionally performed a piece of music that had been outlawed by the Salvadoran army in front of the troops. When Hava arrives at the house, Kella shouts out to him, asking him to bring the radio he has got. The fact that Hava is disclosing something in front of the military makes Kella feel too uncomfortable, so she recalls the radio and retains it. Hava meets Christina in class and falls in love with her. The fact that he got a letter from her made him smile. The school is shuttered as a result of the rebel assault on the military from inside the building. The sound of bombs and gunfire can be heard through the classroom window. Civilians have resorted to hiding and covering. After being struck in the legs, Kella manages to escape from Chava's school and save him. The commotion was quieted within minutes after starting. There were a lot of innocent bystanders that died. The priest was even taken into custody by the military, and Hava was there to witness the incident. The priest, meanwhile, is gathering together the citizens in the village. As a human being, he urges everyone to fight for their rights by protecting their lives and fleeing as far as they are able to do so. Kella and her family relocated out of town to her mother's home, which is in a more secure neighborhood. In contrast to their previous home, Kella's children were instantly taken with the new one. It's a lot more confident and serene. It is now possible for the children to play outdoors in safety and to benefit from the fruits produced by the trees that surround their new home. Meanwhile, Hava paid a visit to his beloved Christina, bringing his friends with him. Christina smiled as they sang a song for her, and she thanked them for their thoughtfulness. Hava and his friends were swimming in a nearby river when a young soldier appeared out of nowhere and discharged his weapon at them. He had just finished the camp and was only 12 years old when he did so. He is armed with firearms and issues a warning to Chava's group. The following recruiting day is announced by one of the guerrillas, Raton, and Hava and his pals issue a notification to the whole village to keep their children hidden from prying eyes. Hava instantly alerted his neighborhood of the news and told them that he and his family would be hiding above their rooftops when the recruiting day arrived. His strategy did, in fact, prove effective. Chava's family and close friend Christina make a cake for him and surprise him on his birthday one day when he is out and about in the town. Hava is delighted. He was first happy when his friends and family began to sing, but he soon became alarmed when he realized that he was already 12 years old. Because this can only imply that he will be taken out to camp with the soldiers and would be recruited, he fled outdoors, where he was quickly pursued by Christina. However, rebels were apprehended in their village, including Raton, who was later executed. Therefore, he quickly went to the church and inquired about the priest to ask for help but was nowhere to be found. In Chava's village, the recruiting effort proceeded, with soldiers dragging children as young as 12 years old against their will. Hava then takes refuge on the roof in order to escape. The children's parents are left with no option except to weep out loud. Following that, Hava decides to pay a visit to Christina, only to discover that her home has been blown to the ground. It is agreed by Hava and his friends to join the rebels. Nevertheless, they are being pursued, and the guerrilla camp is being assaulted by the army. Chava's family made the decision to evacuate the area, and Kella was shocked to realize that Hava had vanished. After being taken from the camp, Hava and his friends are forcefully marched to an unidentified place. A riverside looks to be a staging area for executions, with additional dead littering the landscape. Angcha, a mentally challenged local from Chava's village, is seen to have been hanged. The people in their village are fleeing from the rest of the community. Kella is still on the lookout for Hava, but he is never spotted in the crowd. Meanwhile, the soldiers start shooting the boys one by one, and two of them are killed as a result of their actions. He stands there and witnesses this horrible scene. Hava is the next in line, but he is spared at the last minute by a guerrilla assault on the defenses. He returns to the woods, where he finds himself in the middle of a furious conflict. Hava decides to fight against the guerrillas after seeing one of their members being slain by a government soldier. The young guy is taking up the weapon but soon discovers that the government soldier is another young boy he had known in elementary school. He is unable to bring himself to murder his old friend, who is also a human being. During this time, Hava runs both from the camp and from the boy he was aiming at, who learns that his life is in the hands of another child. Hava returns home to discover his mother and the remains of their home, which has been entirely destroyed by fire. Kella returned to their home in the hopes of locating Hava, but she was unsuccessful. Hava, on the other hand, is taking a break in the river. Hava saw his mother weeping in their home, and the two of them were reconciled. To avoid being apprehended by the police, Kella chooses to transfer Hava to the United States, and he swears to return and rescue his brother before he becomes 12 as well. 
The movie ends in 1992, six years after. It is revealed that Hava also saved his brother and took him to the United States and that the war had come to an end. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.